we're going to be painting our clay projects today. So the first thing that you need to do is take your styrofoam plate and turn it upside down and then carefully write your name on the back and use light hand pressure so you don't poke through the plate. This is going to be your paint palette that you're going to use for the entire project. So you're putting your name on it so that you know it belongs to you. Do not throw the paint palette away. You're going to be saving that palette to use until you're completely done with your clay project. All right, your clay project, you are going to be transporting it on top of the wooden board that you built the project on. But now we're going to put a piece of wax paper on top of that. The wax paper is going to act like a tablecloth to keep the paint off the wooden board. And we're reusing wax paper, so it does not matter if yours has dried paint on it. It's not going to transfer to your clay project. Okay, then you're going to be putting your clay project on top of your board. And I did not um, finish my teacher sample. So this is just another clay project that I had as an extra one. So you will be painting um, your tiki projects. And uh, what you're going to be doing is starting with the lid first. So you're going to take your lid off and set that next to the tiki box. And the reason I want you to paint your lid first is because that's what you're going to see um, the most when your lid's sitting on your project. So you want to spend more time on that lid. And then when you finish that, you'll be painting the box itself. So before we're ready to paint this, uh, you need to decide what paint colors you want to work with for this project. So you have an egg carton full of paint at your table and you'll be placing one popsicle stick into each color. So that popsicle stick is what you're going to be using to put the paint onto your palette. So you can paint these um, however you would like. They can be bright and colorful. They could be earth tones. It's really your choice to decide how you want to finish your clay project. Um, so if I know that I want to work with um, a color that is not currently in this egg crate, I can make any color that I want. And on your tables, um, this is what I call a messy mat. This is a laminated piece of paper and there's also our color theory notes um, on top of the surface to remind you how to mix colors if you're trying to make a color that doesn't currently exist in this tray. So if I know that I want to make um, a light brown, for example, what I'm going to be doing is mixing those colors onto my plate. Anytime you mix paint colors, you always put the darker color into the lighter color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white, I'm going to scoop that out and wipe that on my plate, and I'm going to put that right back where the color came from. Then I'm going to take the brown, I'm going to scoop that brown out, and wipe that on its own section on the plate and put that back where it came from. If you notice, um, I did not wipe the brown stick over the top of the white stick because that's called contaminating the paint color. Because if I had taken this brown and wiped it right into the white, I would get white paint on the brown stick. Then when I put the brown stick back, there would be white paint going into that original color. And you need to keep these colors pure. Do not be mixing up the sticks and the colors because you don't want those to contaminate. So when I'm ready to mix the color, I'm going to be using a paintbrush handle to do the mixing. I like to use the end of the handle because it's easy to clean. And if you mix using the bristles, the paint gets jammed up into what's called the ferrule, the piece that's holding um, the bristle to the handle. And then you have to really clean that out really well and get all that paint out from deep down inside before you can actually start painting. So that's why I like to use the handle. So anytime you mix colors, you're always going to mix the dark color into the light color in small amounts. So I'm going to scoop up some brown and I'm just going to start mixing that into the white until I get a color that I'm happy with. And then what I can do is just take my paper towel and just clean off the end of that handle real quick and easy before I start to paint. If I know that I want to have maybe some dark brown, I would be doing the same thing with the black. I would wipe black on its own spot, put the black stick right back in the black paint, and I always mix the dark into the light. Black changes a color really quickly, so it doesn't take a lot of black to change a color. So I'm going to start with a small amount 
and mix it into this brown to start to darken it. And if I decide that's not dark enough, then I can always scoop more black into the brown. So I kind of like to mix the colors I'm going to work with just for that class period um, before I start painting. Let me clean this brush off. Alright, now that I've got my colors made, now I'm ready to start to paint. So be very careful when you are transporting your clay project on top of your board. That wax paper is really smooth and if you move the board too quick this whole project can slide right around and go flying off that board. So I would carry that board with two hands, carry it slowly. Alright, so um, when I'm ready to paint I always like to get my paintbrush wet first. So at your table you also have a Tupperware with water in it and a floating sponge. I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to dry that off with my sponge. And then I'm going to be ready to start to paint. So um, you could paint with the project right on the board or you could pick it up to kind of get at the different angles. Um, the nice thing about acrylic paint is that if you decide you don't like the color that you made, you can always remake um, a new color next class and paint right over the top of the dried paint. So when you're painting, you need to cover the entire clay surface. There should not be any clay showing through. As you paint, you want to paint in the same direction. You want your paint to be solid and thorough and really neat. A part of um, your painting grade is how neatly you paint the clay surface. I don't mind what paint colors you choose to work with, but whatever you're doing, do really well and really neat. So once you've got the top painted, I would turn that lid and also paint the sides the same matching colors because when your lid is sitting on top of your box, you're going to see those sides. And you don't want to paint super thick and chunky like this. If you've got chunks on the surface, you've got way too much paint on your paintbrush, you're wasting paint, and it ends up looking messy. So if you see thick chunks, take your paintbrush, wipe that off on your plate. Fill up the brush, wipe that off on the plate. So I shouldn't see lots of thick, chunky paint. And that's how you clean up chunky paint. Alright, so here's what I mean. When your lid's sitting on your project and you look at it from an angle, you're going to see that side of the clay, so make sure you paint that. Okay, so if I decide that I'm done with that paint color and I'm ready to switch paint colors, I'm going to want to clean my brush in between paint colors. So I'm going to swish it around in my Tupperware. I'm going to wipe it on the sponge. The sponge is going to help remove any remaining paint that are stuck inside the bristles. And then I'm ready to start painting my next color. So you kind of have to decide um, what areas you're working with and what size paintbrush would be best um, for those smaller details. So if I want this dark brown to go in here, I need to make sure I have a nice small paintbrush. And then I would paint those details. Okay, so if when you're painting, your paint gets a little too out of place and you're like, oh man, I was supposed to keep it right inside that line. What you should do before that paint dries is wipe it off. So I'm going to clean my paintbrush. So I've got a clean paintbrush now and I'm going to try to wipe that color off and clean my brush and start to wipe that color off. Then if I still have my old color, I can try to touch that up by painting my original color on the surface. The nice thing about acrylic paint though is that you can paint over anything when it dries. Next class, if you made a mistake, you need to paint over something. When the paint's dry, that, um, it works out really well just to paint right over the top. 
So the important things to remember is that you're mixing all the colors on your plate. Use the end of the handle to do the mixing. Clean the handle off before you start painting or your hand's going to get covered in paint. And we are not finger painting. I should never see paint all over your hands on purpose. We do not do that. Now, yes, you might get a little paint here and there on your fingers, but that um, is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about smearing that paint everywhere. Do not do that. Um, so at the end of class, when it's time to clean up, first thing that you're going to do is clean out your paintbrush. You're going to swish it around in water, wipe it on the sponge. Then you're going to set your clean paintbrushes back in the tray next to your egg crate. Then the paint plate that you had, you're not throwing this away. You're keeping this. You're going to get a piece of tin foil. You're going to set the tin foil over the top. And you're going to fold that tin foil around the plate. And when I tip it over, I can still see my name to double check that it's my plate. Then you're going to be storing your clay project and your paper plate with your uh, your styrofoam plate with your paint on it in the cabinet where you built that project. So um, it can be tricky to try and carry all of these at one time. Um, actually, another thing, you can keep this paint plate in our class cabinet with your art folder. That might be a better option. Uh, and then when you carry this, if the sides are wet, you're going to want them to stay side by side then be very, very careful as you transport that back to your assigned shelf. All right, as a table, if you are third period, third period, all you're going to be doing is throwing away your used paper towel. Leave any paper towel that were not used at your table. You should have all of your brushes cleaned out and resting on the tray, and there should be one popsicle stick in each color. That is what third period will be doing. Then um, you can take your water bucket, go dump it out at the sink, and get clean water ready for fourth period. Make sure your sponge is still back inside your bucket. Okay, fourth period, because you're my last class to paint for the day. What you're going to be doing is removing the popsicle sticks from the egg carton. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the stick out, and you're going to kind of wipe off the extra in the side, and then you're going to set your...